Good evening, everybody. These days, it seems, people will do almost anything to get on television. Stand behind news reporters mouthing, hello, mum. <laughs> Deliberately buy yoghurts that are past their sell-by date so they can complain to Anne Robinson. <laughs> or video their pets being knocked unconscious by garden swings <laughs> in the hope that the producer of You've Been Framed will believe it to be spontaneous. <laughs> fame is the spur. But fame, as we shall see, is like an oven-ready frozen meal for one. Not as nice as it looks. <laughs> I've been looking through the number of firearms certificates you've issued in the last couple of years, Fowler. Ah, yes. I think you'll find it comes to a goodly round number. Yes, it does. None. <laughs> right? No more, no less. 92 sponsored applications, none accepted. That is correct. Including the bloke I sponsored. Or more accurately, particularly the bloke you sponsored. <laughs> he is the chief todger of my lodge. If I can't swing him a permit, I'm going to look a right dicky doodah, -doo, aren't I? I do not approve firearms applications in order to prevent you from looking a dicky doodah, Grim. <laughs> Besides which, I could issue the fellow with a cruise missile permit, and you would still look like a dicky doodah. <laughs> it is not within my power to prevent you from looking like a dicky doodah. Only God or a large bag could do that. <laughs> it is your job. To vet the applications, you're supposed to ask questions to find out who's a suitable person to own a gun. That's right. And surely the first question must be, does that person wish to own a gun? Well, of course. And if the answer to that is yes, then clearly that person is not a suitable person to have one. <laughs> this is the nanny state gone mad! What? Because I don't happen to think that a man who lives in a suburban semi needs an automatic weapon. <laughs> He's a Sportsman! Then tell him to buy a pair of plimsolls. <laughs> sport? Sport? When did you last see a wild boar in Gasforth? <laughs> or an elk? <laughs> and if you did, dispatching it with a spear or an arrow would be sport. But deploying an elk-seeking missile is just <laughs> cheating. This is a civil liberties issue. You are denying my todger his rights. <laughs> And what about the rights of those who do not wish to live next to an armed man? Particularly one who attends weekly secret meetings in which he puts on a dress and kisses a dead turkey's bottom. <laughs> we only kiss the turkey's bottom on special occasions. <laughs> Normally we might do with a chicken nugget. <laughs> I am talking about the rights of the individual here. Which I consider secondary to those of the community as a whole. This town is a human nest. If you were an ant, would you consider it a matter of hymenopterous civil liberties that a socially dysfunctional worker ant be allowed to keep a pet anteater? <laughs> if it was securely muzzled and tethered, yes, I would. <laughs> then clearly you are quite mad, Grim. Good day. Dando. She can take down my particulars any time she likes. <laughs> so serious, so firm. Lovely jackets. <laughs> you know, I don't know what she does to the crooks, but she certainly scares me. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid the fact of the matter is uh, crime is just so much better on the television. Well, I don't approve of this current broadcasting trend that turns police work and video surveillance into entertainment. Actors train for years to get the chance to appear on the television. But why do they bother? Just steal one and you'll be on the following night. <laughs> I remember when there were other things on the television. Grumpy Scottish doctors. And dictionary games. There's marvellous royal variety extravaganzas with puppeteers from Prague who you weren't supposed to be able to see because they wore black jumpers. <laughs> Timeless stuff. Clean. Wholesome. Boring. Well, yes, perhaps slightly boring. I confess I normally made a cup of tea when those Greek men who jump onto each other's shoulders and end up standing on top of one another in a great big pile were on. <laughs> but it just made Cliff Richard's bit even better. It's no good 
harking back to the past like a sad old gitzer. <laughs> TV's changed. People like police shows. But they're so predictable. There's always the two officers. They don't get on, then they do get on. One of them's fat and gruff, the other one's thin and posh. One's a sad old drunk, the other one's a health fanatic. One of them's a woman, the other one's a Martian. One of them has four heads, the other one's allergic to heads. <laughs> if there were as many police officers on the beat as there are on television, the country wouldn't be in the state it's in. <laughs> These TV twits should come along to a real station and see what it's actually like. <laughs> you be sergeant, what is the matter? We're going to be on the telly! Calm yourself, sergeant, calm yourself. Now, what is this nonsense? This came for you. And a fax to me, Sergeant? Yes. But then I and presume that you do not know its contents. Oh, of course I do. I always read your mail. At home. At home you do, Sergeant. But at work you wouldn't dream of reading the private communications of your commanding officer. Oh, all right. Have it your own way. What's in your fax, Raymond? I wonder if it's something exciting. <laughs> Good Lord, we're going to be on the television. <laughs> The Chief Constable has been approached by the BBC to do a fly-on-the-wall documentary about a police station. He wants to know if we'd agree for it to be ours. Now, this needs some very careful consideration. For the time being, I think it'd be best if we didn't tell CID, because you know what'll happen... Derek Grimmel! Yes, but CID! Come on down! <laughs> Just as I feared. Have you heard, Fowler? We are going to be stars! Limos! Posh birds, no more queuing at Sainsbury's. <laughs> I reckon we should cut a single. Starsky and Hutch did it, didn't they? Come on, silver lady, take me home. And Kojak, he had a bash. If a picture paints a thousand words, then why can't I cry? Look, look, be quiet, everyone, be quiet. Starsky and Hutch and Kojak were fictitious policemen. The BBC want to make a documentary. Not Gasforth P.D. Blue. <laughs> the whole purpose is to show policing in the raw. <gasps> Do you mean nude policing? <laughs> now, we have to give this very careful consideration. This type of documentary can ruin people's lives. There are countless examples of people opening themselves up to the camera, only to discover that the subsequent exposure leaves them lost, empty and bewildered. Now think about it. Seriously. Do we really want to bring that kind of confusion and heartache on ourselves? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I want it. You know, business-like. Because I'm a police officer, it's got to be totally sensible. Severe almost. You know, practical and absolutely no nonsense. But also, I'd like it just a little bit really sexy. You know what I mean? Just a hint of ravishing. A nod towards drop-dead bunkable. So you got that. Sensible, no nonsense, absolutely gorgeous. That'll do for me too. Yes, and me. Oil. Do you reckon my face is a bit saggy? I mean, go on, tell me the truth, absolutely honestly, as a mate. What do you think? Well, you know... No, not really. Oh, no. come on, don't pull your punches. Give it me absolutely straight. Is it a bit saggy? Uh, maybe just a touch. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Blooming charming, that really helps my confidence, that does. <laughs> I'm fat. I'm grotesque. Oh. I look like I'm resting my jaw on a stack of crumpets. <laughs> I am a vast, unsightly, wobbling mound of lard. I can't do it while I simply can't face the cameras. Say, you look lovely. Superb shape. The girls will go potty. Do you really think so? Honestly? No question. Birds love us, Lapid. <laughs> A slapid? Well, like you were saying, sir, Kojak. The girls will be queuing up to lick your lollipop. 